Welcome, everyone. We are back here on the Digital Workplace Podcast. Today, our guest is Christina Hines Mesco. She is of counsel at the Prins Law Firm. Hey, Christina, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Neil, for having me. Very excited to have you on. This is like such a, a important topic. Um, you reached out to me, said, "Hey, are, are you talking about this?" And I'm like, "No, we're not. We, we should. We're, we're talking about um, sexual harassment in digital work spaces." Um, so that's going to be a very important topic. But before we do that, we need to check to make sure that you are a certified human. So I'm going to ask you a capture question. Your question is, are you more likely to overplan or underplan a party with friends? Mm, um, I would say, uh, I would say uh, overplan. Um, and that gets me in trouble sometimes because <laughs> that means um, I, I, I sent out this elaborate invitation once and I put one start time in the like body of the email and then one in the link for the, the online invitation, two different times. Uh oh. So uh, one of my friends showed up and I, I was still in my pajamas. So <laughs> yeah, too short, too short. So yeah, over, over plan, but under execute, let's say that. Okay. Oh yeah. That's, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm very much like if it's just with friends, I'm like, yeah, show up sometime and yeah. maybe we'll be ready as long as you're cool with that. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. You no, know, you can always use extra helping hands when you're gonna raise yeah. the party, right? Like, COVID's been nice because I'm like, just come in the backyard. It's good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Nothing, nothing else is wrong. Well, cool. Let, let's jump into this. We're we're talking about updating our our understanding of sexual harassment um, when it comes into the digital age, you uh, deal with this from a legal standpoint. So just kind of share your perspective of why this is a topic you're passionate about and why it's something you feel like people need to be talking about. Okay. So I um, am an employment attorney, employment and business attorney. So I apply, uh, uh, advise employers and employees regarding these issues. And so I think why I'm personally passionate about um, sexual harassment in the workplace is that, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a violation of human dignity. People, are working because it's a means to an end. They want to live their lives, and um, they, their workplace should be free from bullying, from harassment, in particular um, sexual harassment. I, I've worked with many clients who've been subjected to it, and of course, you know, friends, and 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 also at personal experiences, and it's damaging. It's damaging yep. to to workers. It's it's damaging to businesses too, because if you have, uh, you know, your your obviously your employees are your, your biggest asset in a business. And if you're harming them, um, you're not getting the best work from them. You're not getting their, the, you know, all the creativity and all the productivity that you could get from them. So I think that's, that's one like, you know, selfish reason that employers should be interested in, in making sure their workplaces are free from sexual harassment. But, uh, you know, and of course the, the, the damage that it does cause employees is, um, as I said, I've walked with people, held their hands through these experiences, and um, I am passionate about trying to, on the employer side, help employers understand how their workplace is impacted by this sort of behavior, and um, and then protect employees from it when it's yeah. happening to them. Yeah, well, absolutely. It's something that we need to be talking about and, and need to update on. So let, let's just start there. Yeah. Um, let, let's give a definition of sexual harassment and then also how that changes when you move into digital spaces. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so sexual harassment is, is defined as unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature. Um, and this, this kind of conduct can create a hostile work envir environment for employees um, if it is severe. So something, you know, very egregious, like a, like a sexual assault or, or touch, unwanted touching. So something, something of that nature, or thinking about like in the digital, digital space, you're sending pornographic images or something un unsolicited to another employee um, or pervasive and pervasive meaning where there are multiple incidents that occur over time and taken together as a mosaic, they create this, an environment that is, um, it impacts an, an employee's ability to perform the work that they're there to do. So, um, uh, you know, of course, we, there's another definition too, is quid pro quo, which is a little more obvious, uh, which is like, hey, you do this, you know, you go on a date with me or you have sex with me and you're going to get a, a, a raise or a promotion or whatever the case may be. Um, that's a little more obvious, but really what we're seeing that's problematic in this digital age is that uh, pervasive uh, sexual hostile sexual harassment uh, hostile work environment um, and, and it can be you know a multitude of things that are uh, that taken together create this environment that just is harmful to an employee so uh, uh, jokes 
co repeated comments on appearance. Um, basically, I, I mean, a good rule of thumb that I use with employers and employees is that any sexually tinged communication or conduct that's so frequent or severe uh, that changes the your working environment and working relationships, that constitutes sexual harassment in the workplace. Yeah. So it, it takes something like uh, like jokes, like repeated uh, type things that come up there. Like it's one thing um, it, if you're in an office and somebody's telling those jokes in a break room, it, it's, it's still wrong. It's still, you're kind of overhearing that versus putting those jokes into like a chat channel and are making some kind of like offhanded comment about a client or, or, or someone else that's there or different things to be there. What, how does that change the nature of, of what, I mean, it's, it's all, it's all sexual harassment, but it, it, it's almost like a different feel of it for people experiencing it and people that are witnessing it. So well, what's your yeah. uh, impression on that? Yeah. So you're, you're totally right. I mean, you could kind of hide before if you, if you knew those coworkers, if you're in the office with them and, and you know that there are certain coworkers who just, you know, either rub you the wrong way and in, in terms of their personalities or, or do are, are known for making nasty jokes or saying things about appearances or, or just, it's just speaking disrespectfully in a sexual manner. Um, you could avoid them, you know, pass, pass them in the hall, feign some, you know, conference call or whatever. But in these digital spaces, you know, you have a captive audience. You, you know, these, these harassers have a captive audience. You're stuck on this zoom call. You know, you're, you, you can't, you know, just mute one individual person. I mean, I guess you're, you know, you can sometimes, but if you're not in charge of the meeting, you can't. Um, in the chats, you, you can't unsee it. You know, um, the GIFs, even emojis can, you know, obviously have sexual connotations. And so you can harass people without even saying anything or using any words. So uh, I think, I think part of that is that it's, it's in some respects created a captive audience for harassers and provided a multitude of different platforms where they can carry out this negative behavior where, as you said, it was usually, you know, in the break room or the locker room or what, you know, not that that is at all appropriate, it's still harassment and can still create a hostile environment, but it it, it has the power to impact many more in, in the digital workspace. Yeah, uh, tell me about the nature of like, um... The, the fact that like if somebody sends sends something inappropriate to somebody either in a public mm -hmm. channel or privately one maybe good thing about that is that uh you have a record of it like you can mm -hmm. take a screenshot real quick there there's some kind of permanent way that you can record that where if somebody was just having a conversation you may not have been able to, to record that before does that actually does that make it easier to root out uh sexual harassment in the workplace or does do some of these things make it actually harder but with digital means um, I think I think it cuts both ways, Neil. I think um, in some respects, like you said, you could quickly record something even on your phone if you're, you're right. doing a Zoom meeting or you can record Zoom meetings sometimes um, and text messages or, or instant messages. I think that where uh, so it, it will make proving a case that's carried out in that manner more easy um, for the plaintiff. The, the problem, I think, is where maybe the 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 you're not getting all, all of the verbal cues that would go along with text messages or emails, for example. And, and so this message that you might receive might be perceived by the recipient much differently than it is uh, you know, sent over by, by the person who's sending the communication. Like, like uh, you know, I was thinking about some examples of this, like how, how many different interpretations can you come up with a, with a line of text? Like, hey there, looking great today. You know, mm. like, that can mean so many different things to, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? Like, are you saying, you know, in this text, in this chat, hey there, I look, you know, nice today. You're talking about my physical appearance. Or are you talking about the fact that I just knocked it out of the park with the client, that I, that I did great on that presentation? You know, I, I think that, that there might be um, some innocent communications that can be taken, mistaken, uh, for for harassing communications uh, and and you know ca catch up uh, you know you create issues where there might not have been in the office because yeah. you have all those you know the facial cues and the vo vocal inflection all those important things where what is it like ninety percent of our like feedback comes from like we we really don't understand text all by itself without those those uh, pieces of information that we get and you talked about emoji too like I think that's legitimate to like bring up and say like 
one, do we all have a shared understanding of, of what each individual emoji means? Like some yeah. of them uh, may be innocuous. Some of them might have like, okay, depending on what was put in front of it, some of it yeah. is very obvious. So yeah, to, trying to, to develop that kind of shared understanding is tough. It really is. And, and I think like courts are kind of grappling with that because emojis have come up. In, <laughs> in, it, it, I mean, it's true. Yeah, and I believe I, it. I, the uh, situation I saw um, was the, the recipient of some of these communications was like, ha ha ha, you, you don't know what's you don't know what's happening, recipient, because the person receiving the message didn't get the sexual connotations with yeah. the, the emojis. And I think, you know, it just went over their head, which um, I mean, that's that's just harassing and nasty and bullying. I mean, that, that's just that's just wrong. So it's it's a really tough issue for employers to grapple with because we're going to say no emojis, you know, yeah. no no gifs and and, and things like that. I, I I don't I don't know. It's it's a um, it's a fine line that employees have to or employers have to walk in terms of policing their their workplaces, but but allowing people to express themselves and be themselves in in some respects. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody who's leading a team, uh, they're fully digital, um, and the, the person who's in leadership wants to create a safe space for everybody, um, mm -hmm. wants to make sure no one is, is feeling threatened and especially no sexual harassment goes on. W what are some of the unique things here in, in 2021 that you would tell them, hey, make sure you include these things or make sure you talk through these things? Is there any things you would put on that list? Um, I would definitely say, you know, first make sure you have a workplace policy in place you know and you'll be surprised so many employers especially like as they get going and they're growing and they're scaling and and they they don't think about these things have a workplace policy in place regarding communication um i think uh, understanding having a shared understanding of how you're going to use emojis or gifs or you know chat um work workplace communication channels you know um how you're going to use those so something like avoid personal communication through workplace, you know, communication channels. If you want to, you know, speak outside of the workplace, um, then then do so on your own devices or, or communication channels. But that, that is not, you know, totally to insulate an employer from liability, however. You know, <laughs> I get to that later. But um, obviously taking a top-down approach um, to, to the whole, um, to, to communication in general, um, if you have a, an employer or managers uh, who are speaking respectfully and and, and straight, get, keeping away from innuendo, um, keeping things respectful, I mean, that's obviously going to have an impact on the tenor and like temperature of the conversations if, in, in your workplace in the digital space. I think um, so. Lead by example. You know, you can't you can't tell employees you know do as I say and not as I do yeah. because it just doesn't work. We know that. Um, and then another thing too is as employees you know are home and lonely and and you know reaching out to one another you know as through friendships and maybe even romantic relationships ensure that you have a policy that's very clearly communicated uh, regarding how those relationships should be carried out in the workplace and what they can and can't look like and uh you know an example is like the power differential between um, mm. manager subordinate um a, a lot of workplaces prohibit that that relationship because of the the the, the opportunity for abuse that can yep. exist and then even when things go bad or or just you know people break up there there can be allegations that that the personal relationship bled into the the um the professional relationship and somehow created a hostile work environment. So, um, and training, 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 training. <laughs> I mean, we we're always saying that at, at our office, um, but but certainly telling your employees what your policies are and making sure they understand them and that they abide by them uh, is is so important. You know, people people will uh, you know act the way you tell them that that you expect them to act, and then of course taking action if if there are aberrations in terms of that, you know, people violating that policy because the other thing is that, you know, workplace culture is, is really created by what we allow employees and, and managers to get away with. Yeah. So uh, th those would be my, those would be my best, you know, high points, I think, in terms of navigating digital spaces for employers and employees. Yeah, I, I like the especially the emphasis on training. I think we can we can spend a little more time on that because we, we I was in a, a clubhouse call yesterday. We were talking about the nature of, of remote teams and <clears throat> someone was talking about virtual reality and augmented reality. 
-hmm. and about how actually delivering some of these training programs through those means, um, it creates a, a much more effective training experience. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're actually there immersively seeing, okay, this is like, how would you interact with this situation? If you saw this, um, if, if this was going on right in front of you, if you saw these things, like this is what the Zoom call looked like, mm -hmm. like, should you speak up? Should you report it? Should you say something about it? Like <clears throat> to actually be able to provide those those unique experiences goes beyond just like sitting in a you know the the HR room and having somebody give you an hour lecture on on types of things. So I think that it's a good opportunity to be able to do better training. Yeah. Oh, I love that, Neil. I think I want to adopt that the yeah. <laughs> virtual reality and take snapshots of like the the Zoom meetings. It's like a far far cry from the videos that you were forced to watch to look at them all and like you know, yeah they're like 16 but but you're you're totally right like i think having a dynamic training that encourages participation and helps you know that doesn't bore people to tears um yeah is so important so in, in illinois um last i believe it was last year uh all employers regardless of size, are required to uh, ha have at least once a year sexual harassment prevention training um, with their employees and managers. And uh, the the Illinois Department of Human Rights, which is like the EEOC, but the state counterpart or state version uh, that enforces the Illinois Human Rights Act, anti-discrimination and sexual harassment, they uh, put out a, like a Word, not a Word document, but a PowerPoint presentation that, that employers can give to their employees. But um, yeah, again, to your point, like it's boring. It's, <laughs> yeah. I, no offense, I, it, the content is great, <laughs> it really is. But, I, and maybe it's all delivery too. I mean, if you have a fantastic presenter with that in the background, then maybe it's good. But, uh, but I think tr having training that is engaging is so important and that can make all, the, all of the difference um, in, in how your workplace looks and how people behave in your workplace and uh you know how employees feel to work in your workspace digital or otherwise yeah so I, I for really, sure yeah and, and everyone like we, we all we all agree yeah uh, sexual harassment's wrong but to actually be in that situation and, mm -hmm. and see it happening or to experience it yourself mm -hmm. and to know what what to do i mean all that stuff just kind of goes out your mind unless you you've actually practiced that and, and been there you're right you're yep. totally right. And one, one other thing, too, that I think is helpful to your point, you know, to see it and like experience it. I mean, everyone has such different reactions to being harassed. You know, some people are awesome. They have great boundaries and they can just say, that's inappropriate. Stop that now. And yeah. good for them. some people, you know, uh, uh, giggle and freeze up and they yep. don't really know or they don't recognize what happened until two hours later. And um, so I think an important piece of the training always needs to be bystander training too. Mm, yep. So, you know, if you see Jim on the Zoom call making nasty comments and you see, you know, Sally cowering in the corner, you can say, hey, 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 Jim, let's let's bring it back. Let's, let's stay on topics. You can kind of intervene on behalf of those employees and, and that would be one sure. way to do it in a digital space to, you know, make sure everybody's brought along and, and, and not marginalized. Yeah. I would add one thing, uh, like as if I was a leader of a team like that, that I would want to say is that when you're in the office, if you consider yourself, I'm going to be accountable for this team and, and everyone's safety, like I can see interactions. <clears throat> you can pick up on energy that's going on. You can see, oh, this person's spending maybe a little bit more time with this person over here. And there may be that may be not going well. Let me keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. In a digital world, you don't get any of those cues often. Um, I don't know when two people on my team are, are connecting a lot, if they have a huge chat stream going on or if they have no communication, like I don't get to see that. Um, so I think as, as leaders, we need to be honest with people saying like, I, I don't have as much visibility into this. Um, so you, you kind of need other people to be accountable and or not accountable, but to, to speak up about that more and to share those things more. I don't know if that's the only solution, but that's one thing I'm thinking about too. Oh, Neil, that uh, you make an excellent point because, yeah, you can think about how you're as a manager, you're totally unable to monitor what's going on, you know, other than in the Zoom meetings. <laughs> you know, you can't be on every instant message. You can't be on all the chats. You're totally right. And I think what you said is is to invite employees to come to you with issues. Uh, if you're a manager, I think that's fantastic. And so having an open dialogue, like even if it doesn't necessarily rise to the level of, you know, the black letter law of sexual harassment. Like if something's making you uncomfortable, 
come on, let's talk about it. Let's have a dialogue so it doesn't fester. So, you know, someone might that, again, a lot of people are un un unaware uh, of their behavior sometimes and lack self-awareness. So talking with them about that, their, you know, how they might be approaching an employer, making that employee feel before it turns into like real harassment is, is so important. And then having like to your point about wh where do I go with this information? If I do, if I do feel um, that that harassment might be going on or somebody's spending too much time with me or, or whatever the case may be, having multiple avenues of uh, reporting that information, because if it's a supervisor, well, you don't want to you can't just go to your supervisor, right? Yeah. If you don't, if you're small and you don't have an HR, where do you go? Um, uh, so I think having multiple avenues to report any kind of behavior that makes you feel uncomfortable can also combat, you know, the, the lack of oversight that the digital, that, that, that is just part and parcel of the digital workplace. Yeah. And it almost, uh, makes me feel like now it, it's become, okay, not just as a leader, but like as a whole team, we need to be committed to this for each other, looking out for each other's backs. Obviously a lot of it's going to come back to the leader, but if, like you said, if I notice some, it's going on with two other people that nobody else has seen, mm -hmm. that's that I, I should be able to, to have multiple channels to be able to talk about that. It's a, yeah. it's a great point. Yeah. Good. Uh, I mean, this is, I, I feel like th things are changing a lot. We have people who, like I think you mentioned before, just in general, romantic relationships, people are, are lonelier probably than usual. Some people are very lonely. Some people are very fed up with people that are in their house all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe, especially if you're, uh, if you're hiring young folks or just single people who are there, who have spent the last, you know, they're, they're maybe more familiar with digital means, but they're less comfortable in, in person. Uh, can you talk to some of those, maybe even generational divides that are there around how, what, what's appropriate now? Maybe they're used to talking one way when they're even in, in school or are coming out of college. And now this is a work environment, but I'm still chatting. I'm still like putting my, in like everything digital, like, how can you help people make that transition? Yeah, I, that's so important, it's, and and to, and especially the intergenerational question too, because even our policy, you know, workplace policies are yeah. a total reflection of an era that's bygone, right? Yeah. And, um, so that's a very important point. Again, I'm gonna say training. You know, making sure that you set the expectations. You know, I mean, you can't fault employees who come in who are fresh out of college and they're used to multitasking and ch having multiple different chats and like have you know, one letter for to represent a word in terms of like the, the, the vernacular that they're using in chatting, you know, so setting expectations, what do you expect, you know, about communication? How do you um, want? Are we using GIFs? Are we using emojis? You know, how, how do they how do employees communicate with one another? I think that's a really big question. And then um, also our policies, too. So I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, like non fraternization policies that employees ha or employers have that say something to the effect of like, don't have a romantic relationship with a subordinate, or if you have a romantic relationship with a peer, then you have to report it to HR. Emphasis on the word relationship, right? Hmm. Because uh, as we've seen, a lot of you know, it's not like the the you know days of old where somebody might ask somebody on a date and then they go on a date and then. You know, maybe a relationship ultimately develops. It's not like that anymore. People are uh, in, in, interacting in different ways. And um, so I had a, an employee uh, situation where a woman and a man were in, in a in a friendship, let's say. They, they were getting together outside of work. It turned, um, it wasn't totally sexual. It was, you know, some kissing and, and but then um, they kind of fell away. So there was no relationship per se, right? And I think somebody ghosted somebody else or whatever. And, uh, and ultimately the woman came to HR with a, a sexual harassment claim because she, uh, the, the male, of a part of the the friendship, whatever it was, uh, <laughs> kept, kept trying to get in contact with her. Hey, you know, and it was all fairly innocuous, you know, and nothing, overtly sexual, you know, just like, hey, I had such a great time. I want to get together again, you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, the, the the woman never said, don't send me these messages anymore or or ghosted. So there were a few problems there. Like th there was a, you know, is it a relationship? Do we need to report it to HR? Yeah. You know, what do we what do we call this? Um, and then also, too, uh, you know, having being clear 
in your communication with one another. And that would be part of the training. Like, you know, make sure that you mean what you say and say what you mean. Like, don't, if you don't, you know, say, I am no longer interested. Yeah. <laughs> Robot. But, but I think, especially in the workplace and you, you need to be, have good boundaries around what those relationships should look like friendship or otherwise, so that no one ends up feeling like this woman did harassed. I mean, whether, whether it was legitimate or not, um, it's really not for, for us to say, I mean, if she felt bad in the workplace, getting these text messages from this male, it's likely she's not able to do her work well and, and she's stressed out and, and afraid to see him on zoom meetings. And, and so I think, I think having clear boundaries and, and some training on, communication in the workplace and of course relationships is so important yeah and j just communication in general like you said it's about like ghosting and and if you don't talk to somebody like and then if they pursue you is that harassment and then if what if you're doing sales training the next day it says hey man if somebody doesn't follow up with your your stuff you got to keep at it keep at it keep following up with it and it's like well you told me to keep following up like that's what i'm supposed to do <laughs> right yeah, <laughs> yeah three no's three no's <laughs> Before you uh, give it up, yeah. Oh man. Well, Christina, this is a, a new world, and I'm so glad that uh, that you are are there helping people to to navigate through it. Um, I, I don't wish you well in your business. I don't hope you have a lot of cases in this, but uh, I, I do appreciate you you bringing it up. And when it when it is an issue, I'm glad there are people like you out there that that can help uh, help us sort through this. So thanks for being there. Thank you very much, Neil. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, we appreciate you being on the show. We hope to uh, uh, connect again in the future just to kind of get an update and, and uh, remind people of this topic and how important it is. But thanks for being on the show, and we look forward to talking to you again. Definitely. Thank you.